Hi guys and welcome to part two of the Clio 172 B-Road Blaster track build. Now, as you can see from the first video, the interior is pretty much done. We've got a few jobs to tidy up, but nothing too crazy to finish on the inside. One final thing though will be the Pure Motorsport shifter, which will be going in hopefully in the next couple of episodes. I'll sort of give you a run through on how it's all fitted. But on this episode, we'll be going through the handling, the sort of suspension, um, you know, spacers, things that are Something I've wanted to do to the car, not only for the performance side of things, but just to clean up the look, but because it's got so light in the back now, the ride height has increased so much that it definitely needed a good set of coilovers to make it look less four by four, so to speak. So stay with us on this episode, and we'll go through all the fitting of the parts that I'm gonna to do to sort of bring the handling back in line with a newer car. So the first thing I did was the wheels. If those have seen the car previously on Instagram, unfortunately they had flaked badly. Now the Torinis that come on these as standard do suffer really badly with corrosion inside and out. So I had them sent away to Procraft alloy wheel refurbs and they did an absolutely fabulous job. Stand there, stripped them right back, uh, repaired all the damage, curbing wasn't done by me and uh, all the corrosion and repowder coated them. We put down like a metallic silver as well. I spec that myself. Well, okay, it's not completely true. My girlfriend spec the metallic silver, but it's a good choice. I'm really happy with it. I think it looks really good. But as you can see from the clip that I'm going to add in now, there was a lot of corrosion on the wheels. And the other problem I was getting was it was losing pressure over the course of two or three weeks. The tires would just slowly be going down. That's because where the bead is was just letting air back out past there. So it wasn't ideal. They didn't look great. So we sent them away. Um, took about four or five days. So yeah, really quick and getting them turned around. And then once they were back, it was because of getting the new 808R tires on. Now, reason I went with the 808Rs is they're sort of a good compromise of a performance tire that you can still use on the road. As I said, we do want to make this car friendly for the road to some degree. As we will be driving to the Nürburgring in it, it needs to be able to be used legally on the road. But that does bring me on to another fact. A few of you commented on the last video, something I unfortunately wasn't aware of. You're not allowed wraparounds on the Nürburgring. So yeah, that was a bit of a shitter. So, I do want to keep the seats. Stay tuned for the video. What we might be doing is going ghetto and running one Bimarco Futura, which is just a normal fiberglass without the wrap around. And then obviously when I come back from the trip, that can stay in the loft, garage, whatever for the next trip. And then these bad boys can go back in for the road. So when I bought the car, it came with Ibac Sport Lines. Good spring that worked with the standard dampers. Nothing too crazy in terms of performance or handling improvements. Just sort of drops the height a little bit, stiffens everything up. But I knew long term that I would be going down the route of proper coilovers if we were building a track build. Now at the time, my friend said to me he can have his old FK Coney coilovers. And we took them off his car because he was doing a full refresh. And unfortunately, they were quite badly leaking, um, especially from the front dampers and the rears were completely shot. So basically, I just banged them on there, got rid of the sport line springs and it just sat parked on there. And I went out on one drive and I was like, these are just absolutely shags. So sat at the storage, like I say, for like six, seven months on those dampers. And then when it came back, it was time to finally invest in some proper coilovers. Now I went with the Bilstein B14 kit. And the reason I did that over, you know, going with something like an AST or even something, I don't know, more adjustable is, I don't really know enough about suspension to be able to get the best out of the car. So I thought with the Bill Steins, they're obviously preset damping. It's just the ride height that you adjust. You put the kit on, it's got preset camber, which you can also adjust if you want to add camber bolts. And do you know what? I'm really happy with the kit. They've obviously tested it a lot on the Nürburgring, which is where we plan to go back. I didn't buy the, you know, the marketing that, oh, it's going to be a race car around there now because I've got the coilovers on test at the ring. But Bill Stein have been around for donkey's years and they have made good kits. So I thought for the price, we'll put those on. We'll give them a run. I'm going to run the standard top mounts for the time being. And the reason I'm not going up rated is when I've done it in the past, I've just been so crashy every pothole bump in the road. It's just too much for a road car, at least with the standard top mounts, you get a bit of damping, but that might change if the car goes to a more sort of serious level and it just becomes a full-time track car. But I do love the little thing. And like I say, it'd be nice just to take it out on a little Sunday morning blast and sort of go back to those memories of in my early twenties when I was tearing around in it. So yeah, the suspension wise, just gone with the Bill Steins. I'm gonna go brand new Renault lower wishbones, I'm gonna go brand new track rod ends. Don't know whether I'm gonna do the track rods because when I checked them, they had no play in it. It was just in the end of the track rod end that had some movement in it. Another big thing that has become really clear on the Clio Mark II is the steering rack bushes. Now, the steering rack bolts to the subframe and in between that is two rubber bushes and they just sort of over time corrode and you get a lot of oil off of the Clio rocker covers that leak as they get older over the years and that has obviously deteriorated those and I've noticed, I mean, you can't you can't really hear it now, I've got steering lock on, but there's a little bit of movement in it and when I jacked it up, I could see it was in the rack. So I thought, you know what, we'll get those changed 
The originals are something like 60, 70 quid, or you can buy uprated Power Flex Black Series for about 25 pounds. So check what make rack you've got in there because they are slightly different. I think this is the SMI, so it should be straightforward enough. We'll check that, get those in there, and then obviously that should tighten everything up. Now, the rear long-term plan will be to drop the rear beam, powder coat it all, and get all the bushes done on that because it is looking pretty corroded under there, it's a little bit tired. I mean, it's done 130,000 miles, so it is a French car. I mean, even modern cars now, they, they get the corrosion too on the underside. So, But for this year, I'm just gonna uh, install the Pure Motorsport Sport rear shim spacers, which I've done. Gives it about 10 mil more width. And the nice thing with those is it doesn't put any more work on the wheel bearings because you're actually moving the hub out, not off of the actual brake disc stroke bearing. With the front, I've gone a bit more wild. I've gone 15 millimeter, but they are bolted straight on to the disc. So the problem you can run into with this is increased wear on the bearings, especially if you're running a stickier tire. And obviously the other factor is it can start to tramline the car. So we'll see how we get on. I'm on the slightly wider offset anyway on the Cup Torinis. But yeah, we'll see how it drives on the road. If I'm happy with that, great. If we get it on track, great. But a lot of this year really is gonna be just running a shakedown to see how everything works. It's been so long since I've played with them and the game's moved on, the modifications have moved on, more problems have become more apparent with the Mark II Clio as they've become an older car. And I said, they are starting to rust. I've seen a lot of posts now on the owners club where people are getting it in the seals. Thankfully, nothing on this one, but it is something you've got to bear in mind that things have moved on in sort of seven, eight years since I was really hardcore into playing with them. But yeah, that side of things, obviously it should handle really nicely once it's all done. It's got a nice stance on the look, which I do like. And a lot of people say, oh, it's a track car. You should be worried about how it looks, but I do like it to look all finished and tidy. So while the car was apart, I decided I might as well strip all the arches out, as I just briefly mentioned with the rust and that, give it a bit of a deep clean. I'm not like one of those people who's super into detailing, but I've got my two bucket method, my degreases and stuff. I like a clean car and I like my paintwork swell free. Let's say I'm at that level. So I jacked all the car up and then just went through the process of getting some sort of, it's like a muck off motorcycle cleaner I use. Really good for like off-road bikes and stuff. And I've had that for the motorbikes. So you literally sprayed it all in the arches stripped it all out and it just brought all the muck and grime that have been sitting off there. And you can actually see the car is blue underneath as well. So for many years, I'm sure that's been coaxed in mud and I didn't really know the outcome of the car. So it wasn't something I'd done previously, but I thought, you know what, we're putting all the new suspension in. Let's get it all cleaned up and looking really smart under there for when the new bits go on. So the final thing to the car that I guess sort of ties in with the outside, not really a handling upgrade, it doesn't provide any sort of aerodynamic improvement that I'm aware of, is my front splitter. So on the cups, you've got like a, it's like a 15 mil black trim along the bottom and it finishes the front end off. The problem with it is it's a really solid plastic and if you hit anything with it, they crack, they sort of just fall to bits. And the problem is, is I'm running the car even lower than standard there's every chance that that's going to happen, that it's going to end up being absolutely shot to pieces every time I go near a speed bump. And they're about 120 pound a time, so I thought I can't be dealing with that. At the same time, I do want something on the front. And years ago, someone discovered that it's a Skoda splitter. Now, I will put the part number in the description for you guys. And they're about 12 pounds. They sit about five mil lower than the original one, so it's even more width on her. And they're a flexible rubber, so if you do hit something, it's going to fold, it's going to give, whereas the original one will just shatter to pieces. The only thing you do, Take your old one off, put a couple of self-tapping screws around the bottom, and then it'll be about, I think it was about an inch too long on each end. You just literally snip it at a slight angle. And yeah, it looks absolutely great for the money. So for me, those sort of upgrades are worth doing because they don't cost a lot. They're almost an improvement because they're not going to smash to pieces like the original. And it just finishes the look of the car off. Because I did, from the outside, still want it to look kind of OEM. So when it drove past, you just think, oh, it's a little Clio cup. Nothing, you know, with white speed lines or, you know, big canyards on the front. I didn't want it to look like that. Although I do love the look of the white speed line 2118. So I did think about putting them on there, but I thought, you know what, I'll keep it looking OEM that way. It's just sort of a bit of surprise to people, obviously, hopefully even, <laughs> if it's nailing past them. But yeah, so stay with the video, guys. I'd say these ones aren't particularly exciting. We're in the winter, the car's off the road. I'm planning to get it into MOT for about April time. And then obviously we can start putting some road miles on it, see what happens. And then end of April, May, should be going to the Nürburgring and it. A few of us have uh, decided to do a sort of hot hatch trip out there. I'll obviously, or hopefully be in this. And then my friend's probably gonna be in a Type R EP3, love those things, and another friend of mine in a Clio. So yeah, stay with the channel. We've obviously got a few more episodes. We're gonna be doing the shifter because we've got the old standard Renault. It's all a bit fucking slot. The gear nib is not very nice. It could do with being a bit higher. So I so said, we will be doing the Pure Motorsport kit installing the version two with the carbon shifter. Um, and then onto the brakes, you know, I think I might have mentioned it in another video. I don't want to waffle too much because I know you, lot, you guys probably prefer the action side of it with the money shot, so to speak. But 
The brakes are something that's really tearing me sort of backwards and forwards at the moment. So I mean, if anyone's got any input that's running, you know, a fast road setup, um, stroke track without any issues, let me know in the comments your thoughts. I'm thinking at the moment Brembo HC discs, and I think they're a company called PBS brake pads on the front. Seem like they're a good compromise for the money. Um, and then obviously completely standard on the rear because they do very little effort anyway on the cup. So yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. I did want to do the Brembo 4 pot, but I think it's just going to be spending money for the sake of looking like a baller with big brakes. I don't think the need's really there because in standard cars, in the past I used to run the DS2500, the Carbon Lorraine RC, fives i think they were and i never had any issues with braking and these were fully loaded cars back then whereas now we're carrying less weight i mean you're yeah, granted we're probably going to be running a little bit more power but if i get the brake cooling sorted i can't see why i need any more than that but you know what we'll see how we get on in the shakedown if you enjoyed the video obviously give us a like and a subscribe if it's too much waffling there's a few people may comment let me know obviously and it, you know we'll try and improve the videos to get across to you guys what i've been doing and how the car's going to play out but yeah like and subscribe and until next time thanks for watching